the gap year. It's something that when I was graduating from college was kind of unusual for people to just roll out, travel, or do something different in the year after graduation. But we've seen an increase, certainly a trend, in the European tradition of taking a gap year, spreading all over the world to the US, Canada, and beyond. And because our community is global, it's a really exciting opportunity that we have to talk about what the pros and cons are for taking a gap year. Now, as consultants, we've typically structured this so that we have three pros and three cons. And that at the end, I will talk a little bit about someone who took a gap year and what they gained from it. So we'll start with some of the pros. What are the reasons why you should take a gap year? Number one, taking a gap year gives you a tremendous opportunity to learn about yourself in an environment that is unusual, is unstructured, is different, and actually radically changes because of the people that you travel with, the places that you go, the things that you spend your time on. And learning about yourself and the world, the way that different perspectives feed into decisions, being in different economies, that are run by different styles of governments, being in different places that have different codes of ethics or codes of law, provide you opportunities to change your perspective about maybe what you thought was a more narrow version of right and wrong. And it creates an open-mindedness, a curiosity, and an opportunity to really engage with the world, which will be critical for your success no matter what field you go into in the future. Number two, you get experience in the real world. When you're in an undergraduate setting or when you're in a university setting, you have a limited view of what the real world looks like. Your world is intentionally structured and a little cushy around you. But in the real world, if somebody doesn't like what you want or if somebody steals something from you, you have to deal with that. And it's a very fast, uh, open-eyed experience, a growing up experience, and it can be a big challenge, but it's also a big opportunity to ground yourself in what's happening in the real world. Instead of reading about business, you can go and engage with business owners, hear about them, talk to them, figure out what it is that they're doing. Instead of understanding how medicine works by studying an orgo class book, you can go watch how medical procedures happen in a rural hospital in the developing world. It's a tremendous opportunity to gain that real world experience. And number three, it actually does, contrary to what a lot of people thought for a long time, boost your resume with interesting stories and interesting experiences that create what we call at Management Consulted the third dimension. So the first dimension is your education. The second dimension is your work experience. The third dimension are the things that you're interested in, passionate about, and the things that you pursue beyond your education and your work experience. And that third dimension, that well-roundedness, that wild card factor is what is often and compelling for organizations that make you distinct. And for that reason, one of the recommendations that we have if you do decide to do a gap year is that you have a very uh, intentionally focused and structured experience on having work experience or volunteer experience in the places that you go. So you have something tangible that you can put on your resume and talk about. So let's say you travel for five months and one of those months you're volunteering somewhere, the one piece that goes on your resume is that volunteer experience that you can explain how you spent the five months traveling more broadly. So again, just as a summary, some of the pros are that you get this opportunity to learn about yourself in a new environment that's challenging and unstructured. Number two, real world experience is invaluable. It grounds you, gives you insight, gives you opportunity that you never thought was possible. And number three, it does boost your resume. It adds that third dimension to your story. However, a gap year is not without challenges. And one of the challenges is that you need to be able to pay for it, either through the work that you're doing or from savings or from something else that you're doing. So it's expensive. But beyond that, um, there are some cons to doing a gap year. Number one, it's a uh, challenging opportunity. And uh, because of the challenge and the engagement that you might have in a different direction, it's an opportunity for you to lose academic momentum. If you're on a pretty standard schedule and you start as a freshman and you go as a sophomore and then you move up to a junior and you go as a senior, there's just this natural cadence that your life is in and you're disrupting that. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means that the study skills and the practicums that you put into place for the things that you were doing uh, could be disrupted and it might be harder for you to re-engage. It, it may even be harder for you if you strip yourself of the world that you've already known to go back and understand what the point is of the work that you're doing. Um, in addition, it's a challenging opportunity for you to lose 
connection with some of your friends. And as we've learned in the last couple of months in its coronavirus, one of the challenges of a virtual world is that it's just not the same. So you can maintain relationship for some period, but it is difficult to deepen it when you're away. And so if your school friends go back to school, even if it's online or they're in a community where they're regularly connecting with people, it's likely that they will continue to accelerate and deepen some of their conversations with one another just by virtue of spending time with each other. And you're going to miss out on that. Uh, number three, you are starting a job a year later. So what we're going to assume now that if you take a gap year, you gap and then you return to what you were doing before, which means that you are starting a job one year later in potentially a more competitive landscape or environment. So not only are you disrupting the flow of how you are normally doing things, but you're also taking yourself out of lockstep with the friends and community that you've built. They're a year ahead of you when you do return. And then when they're going off into jobs, you're a year behind them in terms of earning potential uh, and also in potentially a more competitive environment. So there are a lot of great reasons to do a gap year, but it should be really thoroughly considered. Now, I want to tell a little story about somebody who I know who took a gap year, and that somebody was me. I took a gap year after I graduated from my senior year in college, and it probably wouldn't have been something on my radar because I paid my way through college. My parents and I split college 50-50, and so I had to pick up odd jobs, find scholarships, figure out ways to get free housing. And I worked my tail off when I was in school to try to find some of those opportunities. Uh, in my final year of school, I was granted a full scholarship. So some of the time and energy that I had spent working, I was able to put into savings during that year. And about halfway through the year, a good friend of mine suggested that her parents had recommended that she go on a gap year. Now, she was fortunate her parents were offering to pay for her, but she really wanted to go with somebody and that somebody had to pay for themselves. And that somebody ended up being me. So we went through the process of planning some of the places that we wanted to go to. We decided that we wanted to spend a block of time in Spanish speaking country so that we could develop our Spanish. We decided that we wanted to spend most of our time in the developing world so that we could live more affordably and volunteer more frequently. Uh, we also decided that we wanted to go to three continents. So we ended up in Central and South America, Southern Africa, and Southeast Asia. And one of the best things that we did on our trip was what we set up at least one volunteer arrangement on each continent before we arrived. And then getting kind of looped into the volunteer network when we were there, we discovered nonprofits and partner nonprofits and we're able to volunteer more broadly. So we worked with Habitat for Humanity, with a medical center, with a sex trafficking organization, and it was tremendously exciting and a great resume builder at that season of my life, which was kind of unanticipated. But probably the most important thing that I took out of that year was a revelation uh, about something that I liked. And I realized that in my school environment, I really hadn't taken the time to reflect on what I liked and loved, what really made me come alive. And to my great surprise, I thought when I was going into the trip that it would be medicine. I love caring for people. I love being with people. And I thought of medicine as a very engaging, practical way to help people. And every time I was in a medical office or a medical center, I was bored out of my mind. But when I began to engage with people on questions of business, how do you source rice? Why is this road being built here? Are you selling online? And what are you doing with the online services we provide? It unlocked in me this excitement and opportunity for developing businesses in every corner of the planet, which has been what I've now dedicated my whole career to. And so for me, the right time was then. I had an opportunity to pause my career and then to return to build a company or to go get a job afterwards. But I had completed my degree, so there wasn't disruption in what I was doing. And I was able to get all of the pros with actually very few of the cons of a gap year. So if you're thinking about a gap year, I would encourage you to take one. I would also though encourage you to be very intentional about thinking about when the right time would be for you to take one. Oh, and by the way, that trip for us, it was seven months. Uh, we spent $7,000 on the trip. We lived really cheaply, really affordably. Um, some of that was through a lack of planning. So when you're on the ground, you can often find things less expensively than when you plan ahead. Um, a sense of adventure and the volunteer 
volunteer work that we did was able to really help us bring down our costs on both food and housing. And so I would recommend that you be as creative as you can within whatever budget you have to stretch your money to go as far as you want it to go. If you're thinking about a gap year and you want some career advice about how to position it as you go or how to set yourself up for career success before or afterwards, please reach out to us at managementconsulted.com. We'd love to talk about gap years and we'd love to hear about your story and your reasons for what you want to do with your future.